Xavier, your online systemic leadership mentor. Step number eight in the systemic change leadership journey is coming up in this video. And it's all about letting innovation emerge. You will learn how you can let innovation emerge in your organization and how this will help you with change leadership success. Now, innovation is about the creative process of solving things in different or new ways or of creating something completely new. And uh, what I'm about to share in this video is partially inspired by my own experience with um, creativity and innovation in organizations. And the other part is also inspired by everything that I learned from different speakers in the Systemic Leadership Summit, such as Christian Krummer, um, Wendy Mahoney, and actually many other speakers as well. Now, let me first of all share with you um, my inner stance on innovation when I look at uh, the systemic approach of innovation. And for me, innovation is about a number of things, and I want to share three of those things in this video. First of all, it is about optimizing patterns or creating new patterns. And um, when you look at systems and the, the network of relationships, the complex adaptive systems that organizations are, when we look through that lens, then um, something new happens when you change a pattern, when you improve a pattern, or when you create a new pattern um, of running things. Because usually... Um, systems have a tendency to perpetuate patterns. And so things repeat and remain the same. And as soon as you are able to facilitate the changing of the patterns, you have innovation. Another aspect that I want to mention to you is that it's important to look for the potential and the natural movement in a system because systems always move and evolve in a particular way. And the ways that, especially um, complex adaptive systems that um, include human beings or living uh, systems, then there are particular ways and particular patterns through which um, this evolution takes place. And potential or the natural movement in a system is what are, what are the forces that go through a system that um, in interaction with its environment invite to the creation of new or different patterns. So look where the potential is, and uh, there's always something emerging. Um, but it's about our new patterns are going to help a system really unpack that potential. And then thirdly, I want to mention that innovation in a living system is a process that can be facilitated, that can be facilitated. So um, it's not something that you can control per se, because you can't say, let's innovate and create this, um, because then it's actually not an innovation. It's just a perpetuation of a pattern because you already know the outcome. But... Um, yeah, it is something that can be facilitated or enabled. And so in this video, apart from these three things, I want to share with you um, a few pointers about how you can create such an environment within your organization so that innovation can emerge. Um, one of them is that it's important to create the space and conditions for innovation. So if the organizational system is very unstable 
very um, um, closed because of instability around the system, or if there's a lot of turmoil in the industry, then it's very likely that your organization is going to go into survival mode. And then definitely new information cannot come in. It's the same with a team. If a team is is closing itself off from its environment because it feels threatened for one way or another, then new information or new people cannot come in. So creating the space and conditions for innovation usually entail um, sufficient amount of safety and sufficient amount of practice also in dealing with new information and integrating new information. What's also important is to bring together different groups and stakeholders. Uh, I always say bring together the usual and the not so usual suspects uh, because especially the not so usual suspects are the people who tend to look at things differently and outside the, the, the current patterns. And so the higher the diversity, the, the more different viewpoints can be brought in. Um, of course, you need to facilitate this well, especially when you look back at um, difference integration, for example, and dealing with conflicts as discussed in step six. Um, then it's possible to create viewpoints that are new and fresh and different and making new combinations that haven't been there before. So bring together different groups and stakeholders. And then um, bringing them together is one thing, but using systems intelligence or systemic questions to distinguish the old from the new patterns is really crucial. Um, It's very important to understand if patterns are being perpetuated or are um, seemingly, uh, because you're using different words, seem to be different patterns, but in the end, they are not. So um, questions like how old is this, or how new is this really, or um, what's the systemic function of this, or um, um, yeah, those type of questions, really open-ended questions related to systemic function, place, age, um, really help you to see, wait a minute, is this something that brings a new dynamic, um, fills up a, a, a different role that we haven't had before, or is it something that we are perpetuating and just replacing something that we actually want to, um, get rid of, but then, it's just shaped in a different way. So yeah, I really hope that that makes sense to look at the system and see where are we perpetuating and where is something new. Then something that's closely related to creating the space and conditions in terms of safety also have to do with the encouragement of curiosity and, um, What this actually does is by putting on this curiosity, this capacity to explore, it's a guarantee to keep the inner boundaries open. And they need to be open for new information to come in. But um, curiosity, having curiosity makes it impossible to completely shut off your boundaries because that's what curiosity does. It helps you explore something new, something different. And then there is um, the sparking of creativity and it's very closely related to curiosity 
But this creativity has to do with um, expressing in new and different ways, expressing from a a free flow where there's no, um, where there's not too much rationality or logic, which keeps you in your old tracks of thinking, of approaching, of problem solving, um, and a linear stance to the situation or what you're trying to create. But really to open up and allow yourself to go beyond the borders of the boxes in your heads, in the way that you collaborate, in the way that you discuss things. Um, And it allows for the new information and new combinations to actually take place. Now, once there are new information, where there's new information and new solutions or new patterns in actually emerging, then you should allow it further to grow, to really be visible and not to shut it down before it sees the light of day. And this has to do with Uh, making sure that all solutions can emerge, not just the ones that you want or that you predicted or that you prefer. Um, Because sometimes innovation is not, is a solution to something else than you intended before, but it doesn't mean that it can't serve the system. So it's very important to, if you want innovation to emerge, to not put on your criteria of go, no go too early in the process. And then lastly, when you want innovation to emerge and really your organization or team to really reap the positive impact of something new, then allow for Failing and learning, not just in the process of creating new patterns, but also in the process of selecting and executing them. Because, um, yeah, this, this trying out, as I call it, not just failing and learning, but also just trying and exploring the new situations and the new solutions, you'll usually find that if they are very strong new patterns, they, they will solve a whole cloud of problems, not just one particular isolated problem. So yeah, allow for failures and learning when selecting and executing new solutions. So these were a couple of pointers on how to let innovation emerge in your organization. And um, as you know, uh, we're at step eight, and that's only one step in a collective of steps or phases or approaches that um, make up the total field of systemic change leadership. And so the systemic change leadership journey is a framework that I developed based on my own experience and a lot of input from different systemic approaches and speakers, experts and practitioners. And it's a framework that we use to help leaders really really increase their success when it comes to working with complex change situations and leading them. And I do this because I think it's very important that they can have um, an impact and take their organization from surviving to thriving and move away from all these very old, as, as I see them, very old and linear approaches to uh, trying to find solutions to change situations 
and using old methods that really don't work. So if you enjoyed this video and if you want to be in conversation about what is it that you can do to let innovation emerge more in your organization, or if you want to learn more about the bigger framework, the systemic change leadership journey, then book a complimentary call with me. And you can do so by clicking the link below. And if you do, um, and we will be in, in conversation, we'll take a look at your organization or your team and to see how you can improve, improve conditions for letting innovation really emerge in your complex adaptive system. We're also going to be zooming out and looking at the entire systemic change leadership journey. And um, at the end of the call, you will have an overview of the most important systemic change leadership strategy steps that you can work with in your organization. Um, and I really look forward to speaking with you very soon. So looking forward to that. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. See you in the next and last video, step number nine. Thanks.